So we see here a Kentucky state senator is, um, they're, they're making fun of that he's proclaiming his political privilege, but really this is what the owners of society do. Um, they're also making a big deal about him, <clears throat> him um, uh, basing on the 1891 rule. Which makes no sense because Kentucky's Constitution is 1891. And if we were to quote freedom of speech, does that mean we're quoting a 1793 rule? You know, well, quoting a 1793 rule, an 18th century rule, we have freedom of speech. But that's not, you know, of course, it's, it doesn't, the date doesn't matter as much as if it's a good idea or not. And so, section 43 of Kentucky's Constitution says that whenever General Assembly is being run, then anything less than a felony, you know, it's not a big deal. It's not a, it's not a crime. They are free from arrest during the times that General Assembly is meeting up. So State Senator Brandon Smith wants his driving under the influence charge dismissed under a 19th century law that prevents lawmakers from being arrested during legislative sessions. So Section 43 of Kentucky says, The members of the General Assembly shall in times... Um, shall in all cases except treason, felony, breach, or surety of the peace be privileged from arrest during their attendance on the sessions of the respective houses and going to and returning from the same and for any speech or debate in either house, they shall not be questioned in any other place. Now, some people say, well, he shouldn't be allowed blanket immunity. Well, he's not doing blanket immunity. Unless he done something treasonous, if he committed a felony or breach or surety of the peace. So... Uh, absent of him injuring another person, I think he's right. I think he's absolutely right. It's not a blanket immunity. You can't go around murdering people. You can't go around trying to overthrow the government or breaking the peace, right? He can't be violent. And, um, and so as long as he doesn't commit treason, felony, or breach or certainty of the peace, then he is privileged from arrest during the attendance on the sessions of the respective houses. So that's for the representatives and for the Senate of Frankfurt. So Brandon Smith is right in invoking that law. It is the General Assembly only meets up for a few months in the beginning of the year, every year. So, you know, it's a summer camp, essentially. And so when he's going to summer camp, unless he is doing some major thing, right, some treasonous, fel uh, fel felonious breach or surety of the peace, then, uh, you know, then he's not, uh, he's not liable for it. So he's absolutely right. The charges need to be dismissed. Let him go on with governing. Now, even though um, it's it, he's right with the interpretation of the law, now, m morally, I, you know, people don't like the idea of affluenza. Some people having one set of, you know, standards of uh, justice versus another set of standards. Now, that's why I believe in a constitutional convention. We should have had a constitutional convention a long time ago. Kentucky had four constitutions so far in the 1891 as the last uh, constitution that we've been able to bang out. Now, there's so many issues. It's been gutted out. It's been um, amended so many times, Kentucky's Constitution has. The entire judicial system was uh, created through amendment. I would say maybe about a third of the Constitution has been uh, wiped out. They don't have the Railroad Commission. In fact, in 1891, when they formed the Constitution, it was started out as an anti-corporate document because that was the rise of corporations in the industrialized age. And they were afraid that the corporations would have too much power. So Kentucky's Constitution did a lot of things to ensure Kentucky people will always have their freedoms. It also expands privacy um, uh, privacy rights and freedom rights. It ensures that you're not allowed to be, you know, you know, uh, politicians can't get thrown in, you know, jail. But it also ensures that there's a, uh, you can't go to jail for debt. So we can't have debtors prison. And there's a bunch of other ones, so check it out. If you haven't read Kentucky's Constitution, read it. Because uh, the fourth section of Kentucky's Constitution guarantees the right to revolution if their government does not guarantee our safety, happiness, or um, um, I want to say freedom, our, our freedom, safety, and happiness. And so the section four, we have a right to revolution. So Kentucky's Constitution is a... You know, I think it's a, a good read, but I also think that the, it's been gutted out to the point that it's almost unrecognizable. And I believe we have pocket tyrannies, private pocket tyrannies all throughout the state, depending on the people who are listening to the U.S. Constitution, the Kentucky Constitution, local ordinances, uh, Frankfurt, you know, their own morality, their own discretion, or um, 
or you know their own sort of interpretation of whatever so i think in every section throughout kentucky there's private pocket tyrannies that which are creating their own laws and creating their own sets of rules that people are supposed to live by and so instead of actually having a system that is based upon law which the rule of law in a democracy says that all people are, should be beneath the law meaning that nobody is to be free from a crime um, if a police officer murders somebody, then that person needs to be held liable for murder, just as if anybody else would be held to account. Even, you know, regular citizens are held to account for the most trivial, meaningless, petty offensives that um, Jerome Reed got shot in New Jersey just for, you know, slowly going through a stop sign. And I wonder if he went through the stop sign the way he did because he had a, a fucking Nazi tailing him. Oh, shit, I got a Nazi tailing me. Well, you know, be cool, man. Be cool. Make sure you stop. So anyways, that's, um, I think we have private pocket tyrannies because we don't have one basic constitution that we all live by and abide by. We're also not being taught democratic forms and functions in, um, in school. So we're not learning to talk to one another. We're not learning to tolerate different viewpoints from our own. And if you believe in something that you have to back it up with reasons. And so we're not learning these things. And uh, and so I think that these are big issues that needs to be dealt with. So having a constitutional convention would be a good idea. Just, um, you know, he, he's right, you know, with the way the law is written, he's right. Uh, Section 43 of Kentucky's Constitution says that they're privileged from arrest during their attendance on the sessions of their respective houses. So I know they want to, you know, fuck his life over and shit, but frankly... I feel if he didn't hurt nobody, what's the big fucking deal? You know, everybody else is being a bunch of assholes. So, um, I'm not against that law, but I, I do want to point out that, you know, we do need a constitutional convention. We can expand our rights. We can get one document which governs everything. They took the railroad commission off because you don't fuck with the railroads, right? The railroads are one of the most powerful monopolies out here. There's lots of corporate monopolies. And, um, and, um, and so there's, uh, um, what I'm working towards is a libertarian progressive alliance because if the Tea Party and Occupy can find common ground, the far left and the far right, if they could find common ground, then that, that rejects the two-party system in exchange for the radical changes. If the far right and the far left are agreeing on many major issues, that's a good, uh, you know, a good uh, example of the, the whole system being fucked. So some of the issues that Nader talks about, because Ron Paul and Nader talked about having a coalition, but there's the military budget. It's bloated. There's too much spending with military budget, foreign wars, empire. So, you know, five, uh, 900 military bases in 150 countries. That's not fighting for democracy and freedom. It's fighting for empire and whoever runs the empire. So your corporations or oil companies, Chevron. So... That's um that's one issue that the far left and the far right agree on. Cutting the military budget, stopping foreign wars, stop getting entangled in foreign wars, and um, you know scale back the empire. I believe in actually having peace embassies. You know we already have embassies there. But why do we got to military occupy people? If uh, China was militarily occupying us, how would we feel? And so I think that's the point is that people you know when you're occupying in the occupying force. You're a foreign national in somebody else's country, and you're saying that you have a right to be there. And, and if people say that you don't have a right to be there, they, they might fire upon you. I wouldn't like to be uh, occupied by China, nor would I like any of my friends and families to get shot up. So, you know, foreign wars, especially based upon lies, um, empire, this, none of this stuff helps working class peoples. But if we had embassies and we used it for diplomacy and establishing trade relationships, I think that would be a beneficial use of the military instead of using it as an occupying force. So he's talking about, you know, the Patriot Act, you know, the NDAA, the spying, um, you know, the uh, uh, NSA spying and wiretapping onto our communications, our um, Internet and uh, our phones. You know, to tap our internet and our phones, it goes against the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution. But that's another thing that libertarians, progressives agree on. So military budget, Indian Patriot Act, corporate welfare. To hell with corporate welfare. To hell with all welfare. 
I mean, free money. There's a lot of farmers that get a lot of money for not raising their stuff. There's that big tobacco buyout. And so if you were a raisin farmer, you're getting wealth. If you're raising tobacco, you are getting welfare. Um, corporate welfare in, the, in, in terms of entitlement, subsidies, handouts, giveaways, bailouts. Bailed out the big banks, right? Corporate entitlements, um, subsidies, giving them money, any handouts or giveaways. We, we, you know, if you're going to be against welfare for regular people, you got to be against welfare for corporations. Because if you're in favor of welfare for corporations, you believe in socialism for the rich. You believe that the rich should take uh, our tax dollars and to keep the money for themselves. And that's the system we're seeing right now. But these are the issues that both the far right and the far left agree on. So whereas we might not agree on welfare, but corporate welfare, uh, true conservatives are against corporate welfare. And that's the biggest difference between your conservatives right now. Uh, who are the corporatist Republicans versus the non-corporatist Republicans? So um, he was saying that uh, basically he made, uh, Nader points out the FDR sided with Stalin against Hitler. And he's saying, well, why did he side with Stalin? Well, Stalin went along with everything FDR wanted. So FDR wanted all this, and so Stalin went along with them. And so, you know, they're able to squash uh, Hitler, even though Stalin himself has, uh, you know, killed way more people you know, than uh, Hitler could have ever dreamed of. And so just even though if it makes strange bedfellows, you know, Nader says you can get together on corporate entitlements, subsidies, hand, handouts, giveaways, bailouts. Ron Paul's dead set against that. So there are a lot of libertarian conservatives. In fact, it's almost a mark of being a libertarian conservative in contrast to being a corporatist conservative. So, again, military budget, foreign wars, empire, corporate welfare, Patriot Act. These are, you know, four things, four issues that the right, the far right and far left can agree on. And so, you know, we should agree on, on these and we should, uh, you know, form coalitions on these. That's, um, you know, the Patriot Act and um, unnecessary war. It's not saying no military. It's just saying no bloated military, no spending all. You know, we spent how many trillions of dollars for the Iraq war? And what did we get from that? What kind of returns did we get from that? Um, some of the other issues, let's see, that the uh, conservative ideas that I agree on, because frankly, if the conservatives are doing them, and libertarian or progressives agree with them, why would we not get it accomplished? The conservative case for a guaranteed basic income, that's a bit, one of the biggest ones, guaranteed. People keep calling it GMI, all oh, GMI, <laughs> or GBI, or whatever. A guaranteed basic income. Switzerland is talking about getting $10,000 per citizen just for sitting around. Um, and it cures poverty, but it also reduces government spending and intrusion. And that's, that's a big thing for the conservatives. So, you can fight poverty, it creates a wage floor, it effectively fights poverty, and then it would reduce government spending and intrusion. So there's a conservative case, Milton Friedman agreed with it just like MLK, and when Milton Friedman and MLK agree on issues, we should do it. You know, the far right and the far left don't agree on many things, but when we do agree on things, we should do it. So again, cutting the U.S. military's budget, ending undeclared U.S. wars overseas, restoring civil liberties and civil rights by dumping the Patriot Act and withdrawing from NAFTA and World Trade Organization agreements. Until they, you know, there's free trade and then there's there's fair trade and free trade. And they're, they don't, they're usually, you know, like the opposites. The corporations want to be able to make as much money as possible, but whenever we get into one of these trade agreements, we need to make sure that we're upholding you know, workers' rights and the right to unionize. So the, um, uh, so, you know, other countries aren't, you know, other foreign companies aren't uh, dictating our policies, for one thing, um, but also to, to balance labor and capital. So you have cutting U.S. military's budget, ending undeclared U.S. wars overseas, restoring civil liberties and civil rights by dumping the Patriot Act, withdrawing from NAFTA. I think we should come together and work together, and I think we can. Um, so, Rep, uh, Representative Ron Paul and Senator Bernie Sanders, uh, the most conservative and the most liberal members of the respective chambers, joined forces last session to fight for an audit of the Federal Reserve, a private institution that handles America's monetary policy, which Nader explained is under no legal control of Congress. So, we need to audit the Fed. That's another thing that conservatives and liberal, liberals agree with. The auditing the Fed, it is, you know, the, the Federal Reserve is operating without congressional oversight. Who runs it? Why do they run it? When do they print out money? Does anybody know? Does anybody care? Why would we not audit them, right? In a democracy, we should be able to put 
the uh, central bank, you know, have an audit on the central bank. We should show some transparency, you know, for the central bank. I don't see why we wouldn't do something like that. So, uh, of course, we should audit the Fed, uh, dump the Patriot Act, fuck the, the NDAA, you know, the spying programs. is because we are a war society, because we are engaged in war against terrorism for the last, what, 14 years. Well, the, they're allowed to have executive orders, so that's why we have tyrannical presidents who have consolidated a lot of power in one position, in one office. And so, you know, the through the president, they just tell the CIA, they just tell the FBI, they just tell whoever they want to tell to tap the NSA to tap into people's phones, and um, and that's how it works, you know. And when he, uh, Obama came out with the uh, immigration policy. I was happy for that because the shellacking that the Democrats got by the, the Republicans. Um, but he could have done that, you know, on many issues. He could have done executive orders for many things, you know, that I agree with. And so, um, but the reason why is because we're in war. And because we're in war, he's allowed to implement any policy he wants to because he's a wartime president. And wartime presidents have way more power than peacetime presidents. You know, even Abraham Lincoln suspended habeas corpus and... Uh, it declared martial law, you know, so um, put people behind bars, you know, without uh, without charging them. So that was, uh, you know, that was during wartime, though. So and people say, well, it was during a war and war as hell. And so there's an argument for it. So if we get out of war and become a peacetime nation, then we could restore the presidency back to the rightful position where we're at. Um, also, just, you know, the, the, the way amounts of money. Um, and then we don't even take care of our veterans, right? Chris Kyle comes back and loses his mind, and um, and then some other guy shoots him. And so, you know, we, we need to make sure that the mental health of our um, soldiers are being taken care of. We are asking our soldiers to go commit heinous crimes, you know, against the people, whether rightfully or not rightfully, for empire, right? We're asking them to do it for empire. And if we're asking them to do it for empire... We, when they come back, we need to take care of them. Too many homeless people or uh, middle, military veterans, and uh, they're getting their benefits cut. You know, and you know, the, the the Mitch McConnell would finance the war, but he wouldn't pass a jobs bill. The 9/11 responders, they tried to get some money for that. The Republicans were blocking it. So you know, there's a. Uh, uh, there's lots of money in the military. When it comes to the federal government, the military and Social Security are like the two big golden calves, you know, of American sort of, you know, folklore. Um, you cannot touch them, right? You cannot touch Social Security. You can't cut the military. But we're in weird times. We need austerity measures, and so we need everybody to tighten their belts, right? And so stopping the uh, undeclared U.S. wars is just morally right. Um, uh, restoring civil liberties. It was supposed to be a free country, but without freedom, then that means the terrorists have won. We've altered our entire way of living because we got attacked. That was the reason Bill Clinton wouldn't attack any of the uh, terrorists, you know, with a, a, a large declared war. He was just going to do a proportional response for the bombing of the U.S. coal. And the reason why he wanted to do that was because he didn't want the terrorists to dictate to America how we should live our lives. Now we go and get our, you know, shoes checked at the airport. And, uh, and then all this is okay. All this is acceptable. Americans don't seem to have any issue with it whatsoever. Rand Paul actually made headlines because he didn't want to get searched anymore. He got sick of it. He's like, fuck this. I'm tired of getting searched um, at the airport. And so I think they passed some sort of frequent uh, airline miles now. So if you're, you know, you're a senator, again, we're seeing the politicians have, you know, they, 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 are, they are more powerful than us. Like, that's our, that's our system. We live in a republic, which is a representative democracy. Meetings we vote and give away our power so that they can lord over us. They do have more power than us. That's how our system works. But um, he took a principled stand with the TSA. So this is, you know, we need to work on coalitions. We need to work on getting coalitions with the libertarians and the progressives. There's a lot of issues here that we're agreeing with. So the guaranteed minimum income, we got the restoring civil liberties, get rid of the uh, NDAA, get rid of the Patriot Act, get rid of the... Um, the the spireless wire wiretapping the the wiretapping the spying um, and then the withdrawal from NAFTA and world trade agreements so there's a lot of things here that we can you know um, work on the last thing that I want to mention with the um, progressive and libertarian coalition um, isn't just auditing you know the Fed balancing budgets going um, back to our constitution 
um, which are all important things. And then the drug war is another thing the far right and the far left agree on. And in the drug war, you know, the, the drug war is, um, it's, it's failed. We, you can't get rid of marijuana. You can't get rid of the drugs. We've been attacking the supply side of uh, the war on drugs for quite some time, but we haven't gone after the demand side. And so massive education, you know, why are people think that their lives are so miserable that they're going to, you know, smoke all their um, wealth, you know, in meth? Why do they, you know, why do, I don't get it. Meth just fucks up your face, fucks up your teeth and messes your pretty face up. It, but it's uh, it's cheap, I guess. And uh, people's lives are miserable. So they say, fuck it. So for conservative solar power is a chance to put an end to state regulated monopolies and electricity and create an opportunity for investment for every homeowner. So solar panel, uh, solar power in Florida. Um, right now, if they, uh, you can have a solar power panel on your own house, but if you want to sell any electric from your solar power panel to your neighbors, you're not allowed to do that. So tea parties and environmental groups are getting together because solar power is the next step. So that goes against the utility monopolies, um, which you know conservatives hate, and then you have. Um, solar panel which is just good for the environment so this is a good you know these are good ideas when both of them when both the far right and the far left agree on issues we should do it we should be balancing the budget we should audit the fed we should end the war we should stop being an empire we should work on peace embassies and uh working on trade agreements you know um it's weird actually they said that actually both of them want to get out of the nafta so, but uh, could you make a trade agreement with the country that everybody agreed with? I think you could. As long as, you know, corporations want their day, they want a seat at the table, but so do the unions and so do working class people. So as long as you can um, make fair trade, you know, as long as you can turn free trade into fair trade, then I think you got something going on. So that's what we need. We need, you know, NAFTA is actually a military alliance, so isn't it? It's the uh, world trade agreements, though. There's other ones, I think, with, uh, or no, NAFTA... No, my bad. I'm thinking. What the fuck am I thinking? I'm thinking of NATO. NAFTA is a the trade the Northern Atlantic Treaty, whatever the Mexico and Canada free trade agreement. So, but it can be freight fair trade, right? It can we could have fair trade. Um, why would we not want fair trade? We want. I mean, it just uh, everybody. If you're not at the seat at the table, then you're probably for dinner. So that means working class people need a seat at the table. Unions are traditionally the vehicles for working class people. And, um, and so, okay, so NAFTA, let's just, I'm just reviewing these issues because we need to, you know, these are issues where coalitions can be built, um, uh, between the far left and the far right, but amongst each other too. So ending the wars, uh, cutting blood, bloated military budget, stopping corporate welfare, no more giveaways, you know, no more bailouts, no more tax breaks, you know, no many, you, you got to pay your taxes just like everybody else. So in corporate welfare. Which is a big one. I absolutely agree with that. And then corporate welfare. That thing they call it something else, but um, you know it's the same thing. So wh who cares what they say it is? You know that um, we can respect our differences, but we can also you know uh, agree on where we uh, find common ground and where we agree. So just like with that FDR and Stalin argument, right? They your enemy's enemy is your friend, and so therefore they you know held an alliance to fight Hitler. And, um, and so, you know, libertarians and progressives can do the same. So I just want to see the hemp wearing hippies. Hemp is probably a issue. Both of them agree on. So the war on drugs, the wars of empire and conquest, the bloated military budget, corporate welfare, auditing the fed, uh, general, uh, guaranteed minimum income and uh, solar panels, solar power. We should be allowed to have solar power panels on our uh, houses and we should be allowed to sell the electricity that our solar power panels produce. So these are issues to uh, build for a, a strong coalition. I'll just read this off and then I'll end it with that. So under current Florida law, only utilities can sell electricity to customers. Businesses and homeowners can install solar panels on their properties. But any excess electricity must be put back on the grid. So, oh, you used it, but now you have electric, extra electric. Well, now, you know, the utilities want to get there. You know, they want to jump in the middle of this. Well, why are they doing that, you know? <laughs> um, the uh, amendment, the so-called Green Tea Coalition, is aiming to put on the ballot would allow individuals or businesses with solar installations to sell power to tenants or neighbors. 
For example, if a shopping mall owner put a large solar uh, panel array on the mall roof, they'd be able to sell electricity to the individual store tenants. Why wouldn't they be allowed to do that? Who would stop something like that? Hey, I'm getting electricity from the sun and I'm going to give it to the people, you know, that's renting in my building. Oh, well, stop it. No, we need to make some money. It would just be your, um, your utility companies. And, of course, they went monopoly on this stuff, right? So we do need to break all these monopolies, be trust busters. So, um, you know, so again, solar power, um, solar power, guaranteed minimum income, audit the Fed, end wars of uh, empire and conquest, uh, restrict the military bloated budget, uh, make necessary cuts in the budget, stop corporate welfare, stop tax giveaways and, um, you know, tax breaks and uh, bailouts. They all need to be given away. Corporate welfare and um, the Patriot Act and the SPY and the NDAA and the NSA wiretaps. So that's those are some major issues, you know, when both the right and the left agree on major issues, major policy issues, but the Democrats and Republicans can't find any common ground. That's when we know our nation's fucked. <laughs> we are so fucked, right? The far right and the far left agree on more things than what the, you know, supposed moderate fucking middle Republican v. Democrats agree on. Give me a fucking break, man.